Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm the Gerbil, and in today's video, I want to talk about modding Cassian Andor and why, once again, the mods that most people put on him, according to SWGOH.GG, are probably not right. I'm going to go into some depth here, so I hope you enjoy it. Uh, if you just want to see the Adrad team versus Sith Eternal kind of jump towards the end, I'll put a timestamp down below. But all right, let's get into this, shall we? Here we go. So starting off, SWGOH.GG, this is February 28th, the current most holding defensive teams. And you can see it starts off with two Galactic Legends. If we strip out the Galactic Legends and scroll down a ways, we do get to Admiral Radis pretty quickly. He has about a 12.1% average hold with Biston, Cassian, Jin, and K2. For offense, I think that that's good. For defense, actually, I don't know. I really don't like Biston in here. I tend to run Scarif, and that's a whole nother long story. But if you go to this website and you scroll down just a little bit, you see immediately below this pretty much is two different iterations of uh, Radis, both of them with Scarif and not Biston. So anyway, let's get on to this, shall we? Here we go. Cassian Andor. So he is a support character, but how do you mod him? Well, it's kind of complicated, actually. Before you start to calculate his mods, you know, most people will probably read his kit, look at his stats, and then start adding mods appropriately. But you need to take into consideration, of course, the leadership of the team you're going to be on, Admiral Radis. And um, there are three different Omicrons that may come into play, whether you're in GAC, Territory Battles, or Territory War. And this is very much a diverse team that you probably should be running in all three iterations of the game. Territory Battles, Territory War and GAC. So let's start off with just GAC. It's probably the most popular. Uh, regardless where you are though, Admiral Radis is going to provide 50% health, 60% potency, 60% tenacity, and 40 speed off the bat. That's, that goes a long way for survivability, but the squad itself is still fairly weak. So um, in addition to this, Admiral Radis has an Omicron that in GAC is going to give you an additional 40% protection, 40% offense, which is sorely needed, and another 30 speed. So you're going to get a total of 70 speed out of this. That might tend to want to push you towards like an offense mod set, but that would be a mistake, actually. Let's see why. Well, offense is not the way you're going to win with an Adrad team. Whenever a Rogue One ally is critically hit, K2, Scarif, Baze, you got three tanks to pick from. They will apply Expose on the enemy, and whenever an enemy with Expose is hit, I believe it deals 20% of their max health damage to them. That's how you're going to win, not from your own offensive power, but from triggering, stacking and triggering lots of Exposes. So right off the bat, here's your win con with the survivability. All right, now to go a little bit deeper, we need to look at how Cassian like synergizes and connects with his team. He works really, really well with K2SO, lots of call outs in both of their kits. He has a very interesting, unique territory battle Omicron that is unlike anyone else in the game. And he's a pilot who's critical to the home one fleet. And of course you need him at Relic 8 to get profundity. So he is a rather important character even if he's sometimes underwhelming. Now, the Omicron is, as I said, it's very, very unique because in territory battles, he turns into three different characters. And honestly, I think outside of light side geo territory battle, he's just not all that effective. I've run him several times in the new Territory Battle 3, uh, Rise of the Empire, and I've had mixed results, sometimes going two for two. Once I did it really, really easy, and I was like, huh, that was easy. But other times I kind of struggled with it. Not my ideal team, but in light side geo territory battle, I've gone four out of four uh, on every phase of the event without much trouble. It's, it's pretty easy. I have a whole video about it, so I can link that down below. But in light side geo battle, he's really, really good. But what's interesting is that in Light Side Geo, he becomes a, a copy of Watt. And Watt, as we know, does no damage. So if you mod him for offense and you run him with his Omicron in Light Side Geo battles, it does nothing. The offense mods just sit there doing absolutely nothing for you. And the other ones, of course, yes, you get and get some damage. But what is really the, the key takeaway from his Omicron is that whenever Cassian uses an ability, he's going to inflict... Um, Ability block, he's going to debuff them also with healing immunity, defense down, and buff immunity. The key word there is inflict. Inflict, inflict, inflict. And that, that points to potency. 
Now, if you're running him in territory wars with the Jin Omicron, then he's also going to gain evasion up and speed up whenever she lands a crit and she'll, he'll also receive 30% more health, which is pretty good. The speed up is in particular good. Notice how Adrad is pointing towards speed with plus 70 in his leadership in Omicron and Jen is pointing towards speed. That's because you really, really do want him to go as fast as possible. So if we look at his base speed, he has a base speed of 154. Now that's really slow. It's by no means the slowest, but relative to recent characters, Tuscan Chieftain, 204, Inquisitors mostly are at 186, even Sorty is at 180. He is way slower than the rest of these squads. His base potency is 66%, which is a good starting point, considering Adrad will give him another 60 to start off. He'll be at 126 no matter what you do. His base offense is just miserable, less than Captain Han. So modding him for offense once again, I mean, it's like if you start off weak and you put something that's going to incrementally increase it, it's still going to be weak relative to other characters who start off higher and have the same mods. That doesn't make sense. His base critical chance is insanely low at 30%. Something went thunk. And his armor penetration sucks. Just plain and simple. He's in like the bottom 10 or 15% of the entire game. So again, modding him for offense does not make sense. He's not going to do any significant damage and boosting him with an extra 10, 20% offense is only gonna move him from bad to mediocre at best. And again, the damage output comes from expose, not from offense. So let's look at his kit and let's try to run through this quickly. His basic is gonna inflict buff immunity. That's pretty cool. His shock grenade with an insanely awesome cooldown of two is going to inflict five debilitating debuffs once each though randomly across the enemy now if there are only five enemies they could go anywhere but if say there's only one or two enemies right especially one you're gonna land all five of those on the same target so this makes adrad and cassian a tremendously useful cleanup team if you need to because this is going to land defense down healing immunity offense down speed down and ability block all on the one target if that's all that's there and then his next one uh crippling shot is going to basically target a singular enemy and every debuff on the board is going to be copied to that target enemy notice the key takeaways again inflict everywhere groundwork is interesting but it's kind of worthless so just forget about it just don't even worry about it once again the key is potency we need it everywhere here because all of his like claim to fames is debuffing your enemies. Now here's how I have modded mine. You can see that I have a crit chance, I have a potency and I have a health mod. And these are my stats. And the reason for that is when you throw in Adrad's bonuses here, these red numbers are where I start the battle at. This is with Admiral Radis and GAC. Uh, the Spark of the Rebellion will be pre-applied. So pretty high. But even still here, you can see that like the critical chance, even with a crit chance set is, where is it? There it is. It's um, 72%. If you don't have that critical chance set, then a critical damage triangle is kind of meaningless because you're only going to land a crit maybe half the time. So you need to be able to push his critical chance up. Uh, that's why I have some fairly decent secondary critical chances with a critical chance mod. And then I am really trying to push the potency. So you can see I've got like plus 8% on the def on the, the diamond, plus 7.5% on the, the circle. So potency, critical chance, and survivability to me are the three things he needs the most. Survivability to be critically hit so that an expose is applied. Speed is foremost. Um, I would honestly sometimes even recommend a speed set on him, um, but you can see all of my secondaries are pretty high. I've got 25 on the diamond. I've got 20 on the cross, obviously on the arrow, 20, 25 on the square. The only one that's low is the triangle, and that's just because I don't really have any triangles of high uh, crit chance, but whatever. So I do have plus 123 speed. That that only takes him up to 277. Adrad pushes him to 347. This allows you to get out in front of the enemies. If you're running slow mods, especially if you're focusing on offense, he is not going to get out in front of the enemy, and that's going to be critical. You need him to get out in front, and here's why. 
The battle starts off, Adrad goes first, Spark of the Rebellion, whole bunch of stuff. You target an enemy um, that you want to apply ability, sorry, buff immunity and offense down. That's because Spark, when, when Adrad does his inspiring maneuver, everyone's going to assist using their basics. Now, whatever happens, you want Cassian to go as quickly as you can, and Cassian throws out his grenades, applying five of those debuffs randomly across the board. And then, after this, Ideally, you want Jen to go, and you either pass the turn meter back to Adrad, or depending on the situation, you pass it to Cassian, who says, hey, target of opportunity, there I see you, and I'm going to hit you and copy every debuff onto you. Speed down, offense down, defense down, ability block, um, health, uh, uh, healing immunity, expose if they're empire, and buff immunity. All right, so it's pretty awesome. And with that cooldown of two on the grenades, you wanna throw that out as much as possible. So high, 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 high speed, but emphasis on potency and survivability. All right, so here we go, let's check out Admiral Radisson team against Sith Eternal Emperor. Now this one, I know, does not have the ultimate, but that's okay, right? I mean, it's still a galactic legend. Um, and this is really more than anything to just kind of showcase the potential. And so as you're watching this, you, you just pay attention to Cassian towards the end of it, especially when Sith Eternal um, is kind of the lone person there and how, how crippling Cassian is by throwing out all those debuffs. If this had been, say, um, Biston or another Rogue One character, maybe Chirrut, this uh, this battle probably would not have been won, even even though it doesn't have the uh, the ultimate there on Sith Eternal. So here we go. The battle opens up. All right, grenades. Boom. We got some red dots everywhere, and then as soon as Jin gets a turn. All right, attack, call and assist, which puts that buff immunity out, right? So K2 attacks Cassie and assist with buff immunity. Now I think Jin had an ability block there. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna swipe left. Well, it's a swipe right, isn't it? He attacks from the right. I wonder if all the AOE like fighter raid shots like that are from left to right. I bet they probably are. All right, buff immunity still on Darth Vader. All right, Jin, here we go, come on basic we almost got it okay so we're gonna i think we're gonna pass turnover no nope, we're trying to steal <laughs> trunchy and strike it's great but when it doesn't work it's just like unsettling all right because we we could have killed vader okay more grenades look at all those debuffs out there we got exposes we got offense down we got buff immunities we got health healing immunities we got days over on thrawn that vader is resilient isn't he but see how the team is really not in any danger yet? I mean, nobody is really in danger. We're getting some low protection going, but right there, poof, got rid of Vader, and look at our health and protection again. Radis is so awesome. Here we go, hope, and there goes Thrawn and whoever was on the right side. That was pretty easy. All right, so now it's just uh, 5v1, and boom, look at all those debuffs. Um, that's just, that's crippling. We got seven, eight, nine, ten 10 debuffs there on Sith Eternal. And uh, he's going to recover some protection here. We almost got him. Almost got him. He's going to recover some. And then we're going to have to grind away a little bit. Yep, see, got that protection back. But that's okay. The ultimate, of course, we probably would have lost this. But then again, we can ability block him quite easily. Um, so I'm not too sure. I, I'm Actually, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure we would have lost. But it would have been fun to try. Anyway, folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a like and sub. I would really appreciate it. And uh, stay tuned. I'll probably do either Scarif or Adrad next. And I will catch you all later on the Hollow Tables. Bye-bye.